Hello and uh, welcome to this video tutorial. Uh, my name is Blackjack Johnny and hopefully today we're going to be taking a look at some uh, different ways to create some more advanced arches. Um, hopefully you've watched my other arches tutorial. If you haven't, go ahead and check it out. But in this tutorial we're going to take a look at some more advanced techniques that we can use to make um, arches and uh, decorative arches, walkway arches like this. and We'll be using patches and looking at end caps and how we can use them to uh, create our arches. So let's come back over here and I've started off here, I've already created this simple little arch here just using a curve batch and some end caps. And I'm going to walk you through how to create something like this now if you wanted this really clean um, curved look. And uh, all I've done here, I've drawn out these three brushes just to create a little walkway or entrance, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just going to draw out this brush that uh, lines up with our middle brush and our outside brushes and runs the length of our um, our walls here. I'll switch into my top view, it's quite important for this. Come up to patch, simple curve patch. I'm going to leave width at 5, I'm going to leave height at 3, click OK. We need to invert this now, so press Control i to invert this patch. Now switch down into your uh, front view using Control tab press V on your keyboard to bring up the vert. I'm going to switch down to a grid 4. Left click drag to select this vert and then press and hold ALT, left click drag to um, select another row of verts at the same time and then just use alt left click to drag them down to start our arch. Next you want to grab that vert and drag it left and you want to line it up with um, our lower vert there and also uh, line it up with our um, surrounding brushes and that's quite important for this uh, this part. Now as you can see there it's not quite smooth so we can we can use a subdivision here and just press shift close bracket and when we press that, you can see it's gone slightly smooth there. It's added more vert lines in. If we press uh, shift open bracket, you'll see it removes them and it makes it more jagged. So I'm looking for a smoother look here. So I'm going to use shift uh, close bracket to make that smoother. Next, we're going to need to fill in these uh, end areas here. And this is where we can use an end cap. With the patch selected, press shift C to open this uh, little tool here. And we've got various end cap options. If we select this one down the bottom here, that will fill in that entire end between our patch and our brushes but for some reason I can't tell you why sometimes it crashes radiant I'm not entirely sure why I have experienced that myself so I'm going to show you a slightly different way to do it but then I, th I think it's actually a cleaner look uh, inside radiant at least <laughs> but let's uh, select the one just above it there and click OK and when we do uh, you can see that it's created two um, end cap patches at either end of uh, our original patch here so if we just select both of them you can see it's not quite lining up there, we need to smooth that out. So again, with them both selected, press shift, close bracket. There we go, that smoothed them out and lined them up really nice. So now we're going to just quickly texture that. I'm going to use the same brick texture as on my walls. It's not very good, so let's use the surface inspector and use the light map setting on the surface inspector. You see there, it's really nicely lined up. When we're happy with that, just uh, select it, copy it, move it over and rotate it into position on the other side use light map again to line up the textures and biggity bam we've got ourselves a really clean looking arch uh, through this um, walkway here so we just complete it by doing it on the other side so again same on this end just copy it rotate it line it back up use light map to uh, line up the textures when it comes to the center patch here it's a little bit more tricky because uh, you're using two different surface types to texture on sometimes things won't line up so it depends on what texture you use the less elaborate the texture, uh, the easier it will be to line up, but uh, just take time, use the surface inspector and get it nicely lined up. So with that done, let's take a look at how we can create a nice decorative arch here. Um, a nice, <laughs> it's actually uh, pretty quick and easy, but it's technically speaking more advanced than the other arches I showed you in the other tutorial. So to start with, I'm just going to draw out this brush and I'm going to make it sort of half in and half out of our um, our arch here. I want to make it a perfectly square grid 8 size brush and I'm going to line it up to where our um, our arch actually starts here and I'm, I'm going to be using square cylinders to create this arch so I'm going to select that brush, come up to patch primitives square cylinder and um, I'm going to copy this now, uh, line it back up with our original and I'm also going to resize it to where our uh, middle brush is um, to line it up with the top of that. To create a bend here, I'm going to need to switch out my theme because I'm going to need to find my center line. And I need to be able to see the grid better. So I'm going to come up to Misc Colors Themes, change that to Q Radiant Original. 
So just so I can see these grids here, it's really going to help us creating this bend. I know exactly where my center line is. So let's create this bend really quickly here. Um, I've showed this technique for creating bends quite a few times in my other tutorial, so please go ahead and watch them if, uh, if you haven't already. I'm just going to do this nice and quick here. Um, <coughs> oops, too far. Get that back up. Okay, so that's that arch created, or at least half of it. Um, I'm just going to switch back theme because I think it shows up better on the video. So I'm just going to go to, again, MISC Colors Themes and I'll change it to black and green. So with that half created now, I'm just going to smooth this out. It's not quite lining up with the rest of it. So again, with it selected, shift, close bracket just to uh, smooth that out. I'm going to select both pieces, copy them, line them back up, and I'm just going to rotate these back into position. And there we go. We've got ourselves a nice decorative arch. It's pretty quick, but again, like I said, more technical uh, than I showed in the other tutorial, but I think it gives a far better looking arch. Um, in my opinion, so I prefer to do it this way. It's a really nice, uh, really nice way to do it. So I'm just going to finish off with a little bit of texturing there, and there we go. We just created a really nice decorative arch. It looks really clean. Everything's lined up really nice and radiant, and you can create something like that pretty quick once you get practicing with it. And of course, always when we're creating arches and doing bends and stuff and using curve patches, we've always got to check our light grid. Press Shift L to enter light grid mode. Just go around, select your patches. Use natural light map on the surface inspector. This will just give us uh, error-free compiling. It won't give us any light map light map errors in the compile. Um, everything will look good in game. So just make sure you do this. Always, always, always. It'll really save you some time and trouble. <laughs> Just press Shift L again to enter uh, normal texture mode, and that's just about it. And just using those techniques, I've created something really stupid here. I'm not really don't even know what that is, but I just experimented. Uh, don't be afraid to experiment. Just using those techniques I've just showed you. I've used nothing more than that to create this, and it's quite an elaborate piece of thing. A uh, thing, I say thing. I have no idea what it is. <laughs> But don't be afraid to experiment. Use things, you know. Practice with them. Create something silly, but it'll just get you into the mode of using these things. So if we just come out with a closer look here, I've made these nice and flush. That's another way. That's another good reason to keep things um, nicely lined up and radiant, um, and keep things nice and clean because we can have things flush. You can see there that arch and the wall completely flush with each other. Um, you might find that useful depending on uh, what type of texturing you're doing. So. Moving on here, we since we're talking about end caps, I'm going to show you another use for it here. I've just drawn in these brushes to represent like a pavement or something. If you wanted to curve this here, I'll just draw in that brush and come up to primitive bevel. You can see that's already created a curve. Press Shift C to bring up the uh, capping tool again and just leave it on bevel and click OK. That'll create a nice uh, a nice patch for us uh, just to curve off this this pavement here. Um, Again, if it's not smooth enough for you, just with the patches selected, press shift, um, close bracket. And there we go. I just thought I'd throw that in at the end there. Just a neat little way of creating a curve in a pavement or whatever. All right, then. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.